1901 to 1931 were very busy years at LABC in terms of mission and missionaries. Luke Washington Bickle was born in Cincinnati, Ohio in 1866 to German parents. At the age of 12, Luke and his family returned to Germany, where he graduated from the Reformed Church Academy. Always passionate of the sea, he apprenticed for four years on an English merchant ship, and at age 28, he was the master mariner, married and established his home in London. Giving up the sea, he took control of the London Baptist Publishing Society, the American Baptist Missionary Society, having been given the means to build a ship recruited Captain Bickle to take charge of the ship when completed and the mission on the inland sea in Japan. In 1899, Luke set sail for Japan. He died in 1917, and over the course of his service, 52 Sunday schools serving 3,500 students had been established, and in 400 villages, worship services were occasionally held. From the beginning of his mission work until his death, Captain Bickle had served as one of LABC's missionary pastors, and when the captain died, he left no resources, so there were no funds to place a stone at his gravesite. LABC made a contribution to assure that a stone was put in place. W.H. Bowler was born in 1871 in Nebraska. He graduated from Linfield College in Oregon and was ordained by the Utah Baptist Association in Salt Lake City. His first pastorate was at the Baptist Church in Bellevue, Idaho. In 1897, he was asked to move to the Shoshone, Idaho to open up work there, and by 1900, he was appointed by the Home Mission Board to serve as the missionary at large for the state of Idaho. And in 1905, his title was changed to State Evangelist, and the state of Montana was added to his territory. In 1907, he became the Idaho State Secretary, then the Executive Secretary of the Baptist Layman's Movement for the Pacific Coast. Until the end of his missionary work, he would serve in various denominational positions that took him back and forth from the West to the Baptist headquarters in New York City. He died in May of 1957. Roberta Helen Montgomery was born in Rochester, New York in March 1873. She desired to join Lake Avenue Baptist Church at 12 years old and later joined in 1890. Roberta graduated from Rochester High School, attended Brockport State Normal, and graduated from Wellesley College in 1897. She returned to teach English for three years at her alma mater, Rochester High. In 1899, she took a position at the Royal Normal College for the Blind in London, England. Miss Montgomery served on the board of the Women's American Baptist Foreign Mission Society of the West, favored women's suffrage, and was a member of the Chicago Wellesley Club. In 1903, Roberta married Reverend William Eyre McKinney. In 1900, he came to Rochester to study at the Rochester Theological Seminary, and after marrying Roberta, they sailed to their assignment at k West China. They returned to the United States to live in the Chicago area, and William died in 1947. There is no record of Roberta's death. L.W.L.B. Jackman was born in Livonia in 1874. After spending one year at the University of Rochester, he graduated from the Geneseo State Normal School in 1896, and after his time there, he had entered Union University Law College in Albany. Following law school, he returned to Rochester and entered into law practice, and in 1900 was baptized at Lake Avenue Baptist Church. Shortly thereafter, he felt a call to Christian service, entered Rochester Theological Seminary, graduated in 1903, and by December of 1903, he applied for and was appointed by the American Baptist Foreign Mission Society. LABC ordained him in 1904. In July of 1904, he married Susie Ransom. Two months after they were married, they set sail to Assam, where they studied language, and then were assigned to Sadia in northern India near the Tibetan border. While there, they had an incredible impact. They helped to establish a hospital in the area, they translated the Bible into the native language, and they also helped to establish a mission site that consisted of a school which eventually would extend up to the high school level. 
At that time, India was under British rule, so there was a military presence in Sidiya as well. There was a major Cloat. He was in charge of the military station and was incredibly generous to the Jackmans. On January 20th of 1920, Mrs. Jackman confessed to Reverend Jackman that she had had inappropriate relations with Major Cloet. Ten minutes after the confession, Reverend Jackman went to the bungalow of Major Cloet, called him out, and shot him dead. Reverend Jackman was not charged with murder, as the magistrate allowed for temporary deprivation of self-control as the framing charge. Reverend Jackman was tried, convicted, and sentenced to two years in prison. However, it appears that he never served his time as the Jackman family arrived back in the United States in June of that same year. The American Baptist Foreign Mission Society dismissed Reverend Jackman from missionary service and revoked his appointment on June 23, 1920. He returned to legal practice in New York City, and when he retired, he had been serving as the lead legal counsel for the Brooklyn Edison Company. Samuel D. Bodden was born in Elyria, Ohio, on December 2, 1868. In 1890, Mr. Bodden graduated from the University of Illinois. By 1894, he had moved to Rochester to attend the Rochester Theological Seminary, from which he graduated in 1897. In June of 1896, he returned to Ohio to marry Miss Minnie Cotton, and on their return to Rochester, they became active in the Rochester First Baptist Church. During most of their time at RTS, he served as the chaplain at the New York Industrial School in Rochester, where he continued to serve until 1904. In 1898, the Bodens transferred their membership to Lake Avenue Baptist Church, where they immediately became active in the life of the church. This was the same year that he was ordained, and in 1899 he became the Sunday School Superintendent, a position that he held until they departed for the mission field. His impact on the organization of the Sunday School was significant, as this was the beginning of graded classes, and during those years their two children were born. The Bodens had been appointed to the foreign mission field and set sail for India, where Reverend Bodden became the manager of an experimental industrial school at Angol. They remained at the school until their first furlough, and when they returned to India in 1915, they left their two children behind in the United States for their education. Upon their second arrival, he was taken up with the task of becoming the manager for the Cavalli Repairment Settlement, a settlement for criminal tribes. The task was the rehabilitation of persons who by heredity and custom had made their living by murder and theft. The Bodens eventually were transferred to Madras, where he was appointed treasurer of the Baptist missions and given oversight of the work in that city and surrounding area. After they returned to the United States in 1938, retiring in Kent, Ohio, he continued support for mission in retirement. Reverend Bodden was officially the missionary pastor for LABC, and they remained very connected to LABC through all of their years, frequently writing letters regarding their work to the congregation. In 1898, Lily Corwin moved to Rochester with her mother from New Jersey. They took up residence in a house owned by the Rikers and joined LABC by letter. Miss Corwin had come to Rochester to accept the position of pastor's assistant during the time of Reverend Dr. Barber. Although her position was assistant to the pastor, here at LABC her time varied. She visited the sick, encouraged the disheartened, and helped the poor. She was also deeply engaged in the work of the Sunday School, superintendent of the primary department, and led the Junior Christian Endeavor Society. In November of 1905, Lily felt compelled to resign her position with the church in order to take up a home mission role. That same year, she was appointed by the Women's American Baptist Home Mission Society to work among the Indians at Watonga, Oklahoma, where she remained for two years. From Oklahoma, Miss Corwin was assigned first to Reno, Nevada to work with the Plute Indians. 
However, most of her mission work was in Stewart, Nevada, where she set up a center for children in the home across from the government-run Carson Indian School. She had built the house with her own money and eventually added a multi-purpose building, again out of her own pocket. While there, she also established branches of the YMCA and YWCA. In 1922, Lily's health began to decline and she requested from LABC that they consider sending an assistant. Dr. Bevan and Dr. Riker immediately put forth Ruth Makem's name to fill that role. Ruth had shown most recently an interest in mission work, and she traveled to Stewart in November of that year. Miss Corwin's health continued to decline, and in September of 1923, she died. She left her home and the multi-purpose building to the Home Mission Society, but her bank account of $8,000 and personal possessions were given to LABC for the continuation of the work at Stewart, and in 1926, Beatrice Underwood took up the work and lived in Lily's house. Peter A. McDiarmid was born on a farm in Ontario, Canada in 1874. He grew up near Tiverton, which is a community within the municipality of Kincardine, and finished his early education in Port Elgin. He taught for several years on Vancouver Island and then entered McMaster University, from which he earned his BA degree in 1903. In 1906, he graduated from the Rochester Theological Seminary, was ordained to the Christian ministry, and appointed by the American Baptist Foreign Mission Society to serve in Belgian Congo. He traveled alone to Santa Bata, where he served his first term. In 1911, he returned to the United States, and while on furlough, he married A. Ruth Holmes before returning to Santa Bata, where they would serve until 1930, accepting one school year from 1912 to 1913. From 1930 to 1937, they were in charge of evangelistic work in Leopoldville, after which they returned to Santa Bata for four months. Then, they served as field secretaries of American Baptist missions in the Congo until they retired in 1944, and during their time in the Congo, they oversaw 40 churches and 250 village schools. Here we have a news article from 1939, where they were honored by Lake Avenue Baptist Church and spoke at that Sunday service. Peter authored a small book entitled New Dawn in the Congo, and Ruth wrote a short pamphlet for the American Baptist Foreign Mission Society titled A Jungle Tour in Congoland. After teaching for two years at the Kennedy School for Missions in Hartford, Connecticut, they made their home in Monrovia, California, and in 1955 they took up residence at Pilgrim Place, Peter died there in 1965, and Ruth lived on until 1983. 